Now let's make the carrying strap. We're going to cut a piece of denim into strips. Two inch strips as a matter of fact. I'm going to turn this just a little bit so I can reach it. It's two inches and two inches. And if you like, you can go ahead and cut that last strip into two inch piece. You can use that later for another project. Okay, very good. So I'm going to trim this one. I want to get the edges squared up. So we want to join two strips together. We're going to put the the right sides facing each other. And we're going to stitch across here. Then we're going to fold open that seam and zigzag across it. We're over at the machine and I have some dark blue thread because it's a dark blue pair of jeans. I want something that's nearly matching. So I'm joining the two ends together because I need a longer strap. And we talked about the length of the straps being 45, 46, 47, depending on your height. Now we can begin. I have a default stitch, just a straight stitch. I've sewn a quarter of an inch across. And now I'm going to open up that seam. And finger press it open. Switching to a default zigzag stitch. When I say default, I mean that's the programmed stitch when you hit the zigzag selection. We're ready to turn this 2 inch wide piece of denim strap into a 1 inch strap. So we're going to fold over one third and fold over the other one third. And put the presser foot in the down position and the needle down. I have a default uh, zigzag stitch here. I'm adding some width to it. I'm only going to stitch three inches at a time because I want an opportunity to fold the edges towards the center equally. I'm healing center raw edges. Using my fingers to keep everything nice and tight together. About three inches, three to four inches. So I'd like you to continue on, do the entire strap, even though it's too long at this point. You're going to cut it later on uh, to the 45, 46, or 47 inch length. We finished making our carrying strap out of denim, a 2 inch strip that when turned into the center becomes a 1 inch wide strip. But now I'd like to pretty that up just a little bit. And there's a couple reasons more other than just decorative that I'm going to use an accent fabric on top of this strap. Let me show you first how we do that. I'm using a bias seam 
tool by a seam maker. Although this is not a bias cut, this is just straight across. It does have a little stretch, but this honestly is batik, so it's not going to have much stretch. It's pretty crisp fabric. Anyhow, I've cut it off at an angle and we're going to feed it into the bias seam tape maker, grabbing a pin, and there's kind of a slide area here. And once you start scooting that along with the pin, the fabric starts to emerge out of the top. We'll get it going here, like that. And what it's doing, it's taking in the material, but it narrows, you see, and so that narrowing process uh, folds the edges over and makes a nice three-quarter inch wide um, tape. In this uh, instance, we're using it as an accent fabric. You can draw this along with your finger, but I'm going to keep my hands out of the frame here so you can see that it moves along. Some color. It will make the strap very flexible. It will add sturdiness. And in some instances, if you mess up on the zigzag, it's going to hide that zigzag. So there's a couple of good reasons besides just decorating to do this. Let's take it to the machine. Okay, we've finished making our turned 2 inch strap into a zigzagged 1 inch strap. And we're laying the 3 quarter inch accent fabric that we pressed. We're going to stitch right down the middle and then along both sides. I'm going to lengthen the stitch. And about every three inches, I'm going to reposition the fabric to make sure that I have it right where I want it. Another thing the stack accent strip does for this carrying strap is you run across areas where it didn't get zigzagged really well and this is the way to hide that and to heal that. It decorates. It makes the strap more sturdy. Okay. We will trim away the excess and be sure to keep this because I have another project in mind for you to use this. You'll just have to watch more videos. I'm sewing really close to the edge of the accent strip. This is a wonderful way to get your eyes to follow your stitching and to be comfortable with straight stitching even at higher speeds. The reason we did only three stitches at a time for this center is that we were looking for positioning but now we're just wanting to kind of mend the edges. I just turned the strap around so that I can sew on the other side. For fun, let's do a decorative stitch. I'm simply going to change my upper thread. I want something contrasting, so we'll go to the navy navy blue
and install it. If you'll excuse my head. I've been stitching with this old Kenmore for more than 30 years. And I do have my favorite stitches. It does take longer to do decorative stitches. It does eat up more thread, but it really gives you a nice look. Okay, we're nearly finished. Now we want to install the straps. By the way, look at that decorative stitching. I do see an extra thread here I want to get. Let me just get that extra thread. Okay, here's the installation. First, present the back of the strap to your face. Look at the back of the strap. Put, the, put it inside the loop, the O-ring there, and fold it towards you. Then, We're going to select just a straight stitch. And I'm using the left side of my presser foot right up against the ridge where it starts to bump that goes around that O-ring. You want to stay clear of that O-ring. And my needle is in the center of the foot, but we're just kind of capturing and and keeping that foot resting along the side there, snug. That's the word I want, snug. I'm going to go across, back stitch, and that's good. We will do another stitch to heal this edge in just a moment. But let's go on to the next loop. This time we want to present the strap facing you an inch away along the strap. So when you get to the end there, you want to make sure that this is cut straight across. And this time you want to present the front of the strap to you and fold to the back side. And once again we'll press it over about an inch. Snug the left hand side of your presser foot up against that bump. That will help you get a nice straight stitch across and back. Cut your Threads. I'm going to switch now to a default zigzag stitch to heal that edge. And if you have little snips, you can get rid of those little hairy, furry bits. It's always nice before the client sees it uh, to have those furry bits already taken care of. Okay. 
And going back to the other side, we're going to heal that edge with a zigzag stitch. The only thing left to do is to put on a button. So let's do that now. That's our last step. Well, I looked through the buttons just very quickly. Here's a vintage one from Grandma's stash. It's a shank button, which would be nice, especially for the loop. You want to make sure that the loop could stretch and fit over that button. It's important. That one may be just a little bit too big. Here's a button that I made from polymer clay. I like the color content of it, and it's big enough, but, you know, it isn't the prettiest button I ever made. So I'm going to set that aside. This is just plain weird, but I do like it because it has a real neat texture to it. But it does have a little bit of damage. I think I'll set it aside. Here is a wooden button. I like this one. It's big enough. So, we're positioning the button and coming up from underneath. Let that knot rest underneath the button. And we're going to do a stab stitch. Just stab it. And I'm going to turn the pocket so that I can get underneath. And capture that stitch. Then we want to find the other hole. I'm using a double strand of thread. It's extra heavy duty. It's a 36 weight. And sewing a button on like this and not sticking my head in front of the camera so you can still see is it's unquestionably difficult, <laughs> but I'm going to try my best, okay? So how many passes? Well, I think you should have at least 10 passes of this double thread. And when you do complete those, your last pass should come up from underneath and right along the side of the button and pull it through and then we're going to wrap it around like we're wrapping a tree around and around and around and this is going to help the button protrude as if it were a shank button it'll give you a little extra distance for you to wrap that loop around that um, the elastic loop that we prepared. So I'm just going to go around quite quite a number of times here because I want that to stand and I do have enough thread there that I can um, waste it on that if you will. So now I'm just coming back underneath the button and with my finger, my thumb, I'm making a loop and I'm going to run the needle and thread through it again make a loop and knot. Those are called half hitch knots and they'll be fine. So here we are. We've finished the button. We've supported it with a piece of uh, denim. An extra piece. We're closing it, capturing it with the elastic loop. Now what can you use this handbag for? Well, I've got a surprise for you. This is what I like to do with these pouches. I sell them with a hooch container, a flask for your booze. Eight ounces worth. Wouldn't that be fun to carry around? 
You can have a picnic wherever you go. Yes, sir. So, thank you for watching this. I hope you have fun decorating pockets, uh, trimming up some, a pair or two of jeans, and making this envelope, loop, closure, padded purse with pockets and beads. Oh my gosh, I got all those words out without stumbling. And doesn't the uh, decorative uh, stitches from your machine make this stacked strap really pretty? Thank you for watching. I hope you come back again because I'm going to show you how to make some fun things, including making your own labels for your, your designer purses. Lots of doodads, lots of fun things to sew. I'll see you in a while. Thank you. Bye-bye.